good afternoon. There's my little friend here laying eggs in my yard. It's a sea turtle. I just watched her drop two eggs in the hole. And I thought this would be a good introductory into my next video on the subject of a fig in a pinch. Why do I say that? Well, I want to talk a little bit about pinching. Something I rarely do. I do pinch, but I rarely talk about it. And I use it sparingly. And there's so much to talk about pinching, really. It's much more complex than one might imagine from the surface. It's sort of a vast subject, actually, because its application is complex and variable, depending on the circumstances at hand. I pinched this tree, and I'm not going to go into varieties. You can look at uh, my other video not long ago that I posted to see the progress of this tree. It was only 30 days ago, and I think that particular uh, video was named... Uh, you can have your fig and eat it too. <laughs> you can have your figs and eat them too. Uh, wherein I make a few, I think, valid points that you might want to visit or revisit if you've already watched it. But this tree is featured, and I'm, primarily I showed you how many Breba this particular variety produces. And that was before the main crop fig had set. And I did show some branches where there was just little tiny dimples, which were going to be the main crop. And that was only 30 days ago. And now I want to show you how much they've advanced. Now, these are some Breba that are now getting right, right by the way. Uh, I'll show you when I get to them. They're beginning to swell in certain places. But look at the main crop figs that I showed in the previous video video on this tree and you can see how abundant they are I mean they are so numerous they're all over the place and what I wanted to talk about is say pinching this tree and why I did pinch it two weeks ago not every branch but a lot of the branches and I did it for a completely different reason than to produce <laughs> fruit you can see that there's no problem in producing fruit with this variety or many of the varieties that i grow and uh, they remain vigorous and productive because of i think the techniques that i employ in growing them but i didn't want this tree to get out of hand in terms of growing so tall that <laughs> i wouldn't be able to even pick all the fruit and some of that fruit won't get ripe most of what's on there now will. Even the little ones that you see will get ripe. They'll all get ripe. But if that if those shoots were allowed to continue to grow, they would grow another six foot. Eight foot, and I'm not exaggerating at all. They would just tower over the house. And it would become unmanageable. And all of those extra little figs, most of which would not get ripe, okay, would drain away the energy of the figs that would get ripe. So I pinched this tree for one reason, and it wasn't for scaffolding, it wasn't for additional branches to sprout out, and it wasn't for to, to produce fruit, because this tree did not need that stimulation for that purpose. It was to just contain the tree and to force all that energy that would have been wasted in branches that would never come to fruition into the figs that will come into fruition. Even including the Breba that you can see in here that will come to fruition, of course, very soon. Some of them are already, I started to put a little net here just in case some birds became over anxious because, well, I really look forward uh, in eager, with eager anticipation to 
my Breba crop because, well, you know, we wait. I don't know if you can see in there. We wait all winter and all spring to get out our first delicious fruits. These are starting to swell now. I don't know if you can make it out in the video. I can barely see with the sun glaring on my screen. But this tree has hundreds and hundreds of figs I wanted to show you. And I wanted to show you an example of how I use pinching. Not for producing necessarily figs on nodes that wouldn't produce, because this one would produce, but to contain the tree. And, I, and, I, and if you're ever in a predicament, and it's a nice predicament to be in, to where you want to have to try and contain your tree to hold back its growth and force that energy into figs that will mature and come to fruition on time, and that's a method that you would want to use, I think, for pinching. Now, I want to talk more about pinching because I, I mentioned that I thought it was overused and I do think it's overused far too often. If you have a little tree, what I call baby tree, don't pinch it. You know, I know we're all anxious to see what fruit it might bear, but you're really doing it harm. If it's a small tree that doesn't have a lot of vigor or, or vitality, and it hasn't really started to spread, you know, its branches and its roots vigorously, you know, the last thing you want to do is pinch it. Don't pinch it. Leave it alone. You know, if anything, you know, cut the branch. You know, I mean, if you have to, cut the branch. And if any figs, so that it will scaffold properly and shoot out more branches. And if there are any figs that result from that, pluck them off. Pluck them off for the season. Make a sacrifice. Because long term, what you're doing is really good for the fig tree. And it will appreciate that. And that fig tree will show additional vitality throughout the season and into the next year. And its root base will expand significantly more because it won't be under the strain of having to force all that energy into fruit. It can use that energy to, to force it into new uh, growth in the roots. And, of course, the following year, you're going to benefit from that tremendously. And eventually, you're going to get all the figs that you didn't get back tenfold so trust me on that i very very rarely pinch for fruit production and when i do i pluck them off especially if the tree is is young and and vulnerable uh and uh maybe lacks vitality it's just not mature enough to sustain that kind of a strain on its root system Okay, other varieties and most of the varieties really I grow and the way I grow them, you know, they can they can have some fruits on them. This this tree is particularly vigorous. And well, while I contemplated popping these figs off too, I did. Uh, I know that this tree has a very vigorous root system. I know I'm feeding it very well, lots of calcium, and it has plenty of lime in the in the soil. And I give it various kinds of foods, and I give it tea, uh, compost tea, and I also use, believe it or not, I clean my crabs and things that I get here, you know, and, and when I, I clean them, you know, I, I take that, them, what's, what's, what comes out of the, the, the crabs when I clean them, and I put them in a bucket of water and let them sit for a day, and then I'll pour it onto my various fig trees. And boy, do they love that, okay? And I give them plenty of food. And so I'm not worried about putting too much of a drain on these trees. So I didn't pinch off, pinch off the figs, which is what we should be doing instead of, very often, instead of pinching the fig trees, pinching off the terminal buds in order to uh, artificially induce production. A tree knows, listen, a tree knows when it's ready to produce. It does. A fig tree knows, a fruit tree understands its position, its condition, and give it a chance to develop first before pinching, pinching, pitching. 
you know, these little scraggly little branches and pots, don't do it. That's my advice. Uh, and uh, an often caveat that I use is, uh, you know, for what it's worth. That's my opinion. Look at my roses there. They're almost finished. Not completely, because you see, there's going to be new ones. There's always some new ones. I love my roses. I love all the things I grow, but I rarely grow things that I don't eat. But once in a while I do. And we're just going to move along here. We'll talk more about pinching and not pinching. And uh, I pinched this large tree for the same reason that I pinched the other. We're not going to get into varieties. I've already mentioned them in other videos. But I wanted the energy to go into the production of the figs. And this will make a ton of figs. It's a little bit later than the other variety, but they're all come to fruition, certainly by much before the end of the season. And over here, we're talking about Hardy Chicago, and I never pinch Hardy Chicago for production. Like I said, rarely do I pinch anything. Rarely do I pinch anything. Here comes a guy that wants to talk to me about figs, and I've just waved him off. But, uh, since I'm making the video, but um, rarely do I use that, use pinching for that purpose. But this hardy Chicago is just going to make tons and tons of fruit. And so I'm looking forward to that. I always look forward to my figs producing, coming to fruition. Here's something I never mentioned. Uh, many years ago, I planted a mission tree. This is, this is actually mission. It's the shoots from mission. And when I first planted it here, it was, God, it must have been 20 years ago. It made a huge tree. And that was, you know, full of <laughs> another, I tell you, we, we know that we're coming up to the 4th of July. I'm a couple days away from the 4th of July here. So activity is starting to enhance. But this mission tree, to get back to that story, was very productive for a few years. And then I noticed that it started getting a fig mosaic virus and it just wasn't, it wasn't suitable for this environment near the seashore. And I thought it was a little too cold for it too. I, I don't recommend trying this variety in seven a or B. I've tried it and although Mission is hugely successful in other parts of the country and should be widely recognized for being a, an excellent cultivar, uh, still it is limited uh, to certain regions and uh, climatic zones of the country that I don't live in. So this is Mission. Uh, I would I've tried to remove it altogether, but it would have been too hard. It grew to pretty big height in those couple of years of 15 or 20 foot tall. And it produced a tremendous amount of fruit in the first couple of years. And people came from around the neighborhood to get them and gather them up, you know. But uh, again, it's one cold winter really stunned it. And it didn't perform after that. And then it started getting a host of well, one disease, and this fig mosaic virus that I'm mentioning here, it stopped producing a lot of fruit, and it continuously uh, pushes up new shoots every year, and I just cut them down. I'll cut these away in a little while, and they won't be here anymore. Well, let's just move along here, doing some yard work. I wanted to talk to you about how oh, nice beautiful time of year this is a celeste tree that extreme cold three years ago and extreme high tides salty water came in and I it killed it pretty much to the ground it was three years ago and I let it come back at first I wasn't going to that's gonna plant one in another location which I have here you see some some crab shells that I just after I'm finished I just it's, it's a beautiful source of calcium 
I just let them dry out and crush them and put them at the bottom of the trees now and then seashells any kind of calcium they love it and they're vigorous but you can see that this tree is now producing a, an abundance of fruit and it will produce a great many fruits as you can tell it's very 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 healthy and very vigorous and very fruitful the next year will be even more and then the next year then eventually I'll have to cut it back again I do have to do that from time to time and uh, here's the last thing I wanted to talk about today and that is this is my desert king which I also featured in my last video or maybe two ago which I want to talk about to you to you um, this is now they're starting to get ripe. The Breba are starting to get ripe on this variety. As you can see, they're starting to swell. Okay. And I've got a net that I put in place. Last year, the birds are pretty vicious here on the island. And they got to quite a few of them. I did manage to get quite a few, and they were delicious. I do every year. But this year, I decided I was going to get the net. In place and so that will protect a lot of these figs from the birds and I'll be able to enjoy there's quite a few in there but I wanted to just show a technique that I use once a tree gets very big or it starts to get a little too big what I will do is just take a rope and you can see it in here and I'll wrap it around most of the branches all if I can and I'll tighten them up now that shades the figs and they won't be quite as good as if they were in full, you know, or in, in the natural sunshine that they would be in if their branches were, were still spreading naturally and not bunched together by the rope. But believe me, it doesn't make much of a difference. And you can see that the sun is still getting to quite a few of these figs anyway, uh, all around. I don't make it that tight. I just tighten it so that I can get a, a net around it because if it's spread out too far well then how are you going to get a net around it i mean you'd have to have a very very big net and so i just take the rope and i pull the tree together to where it's manageable and then i slip a net around it and what a different that difference that net will make in being able to preserve many of these figs from being eaten by the birds i don't have a horrible bird problem here but it's more substantial here than in New Jersey. And I don't have the time here to employ some of the methods of determinant uh, that I utilize back in Jersey. Back in Jersey, I have several methods that I use consistently, which do work very effectively in discouraging the birds. So I have to rely more on the net here in my absence to so, beautiful time of year. It's hard to believe that we're almost into the 4th of July. A few more days. Lots of figs here to get ripe. All of which I'm looking forward to with great anticipation. You can see, see them all in here. And I've got to get the net wrapped around here too. Let's see, there we go. Lots and lots of figs. Let's move the net. I've got to get a little string and tie it up to the deck to make sure that it's covering from the birds. I just wanted to show you that little technique and talk a little bit about pinching and not pinching. Now don't get me wrong, pinching is can be very effective and there are certainly many legitimate uses for its technique. And I'm not trying to discourage you from using it altogether. I'm trying to maybe convince you to use it with more discretion and to realize that there are many reasons to pinch. Uh, scaffling is one. And, 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 you know, there are times, too, uh, that you really do have a legitimate, uh, you know, uh, usage of the pinching technique where a tree is doing pretty well and you can see that it's not going to come to fruition in time for it to ripen and so yeah you pinch it don't pinch every branch but you, you pinch a few of the branches hoping that you get some early production and that's fine 
So for what it's worth, that's my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed this short video. I'm going to be eating figs in a day or two. They are definitely getting ripe. And I've spotted quite a few inside that mass of, uh, of branches uh, that are starting to swell. And I'm certainly looking forward to it enormously. Okay, let's take a little quick walk over here. Some flowers that I took some cuttings from in another location and started up in this corner and they're doing very, very nicely. And I don't know if you can see the little fiddler crabs down there. They're scurrying about. I don't know if you can see them. Many, many, many. This is an interesting biota of living organisms around here from fig trees to blue crabs and there's a little crab there scurrying about I, I don't know if you can see it I can't even see what I'm <laughs> looking through here but a little crab down there some more fiddler crabs it's very entertaining this the tide is very low right now when the tide comes in, it's a few feet deep, and jellyfish swim by, and the blue claw crabs come in, and there's 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 oysters in here, and there's clams and mussels all over the place. Fish come in actually uh, sometimes, flounder and some some bluefish during the season, and st I've seen stripers, and even I've even seen uh, large uh, drumfish. And there's a crab over there. The crabs come in to shed their shells and they hide in this what I call wild rice it's sort of a rice plant and in the fall it makes rice and it falls down and and the crabs love coming in to shed and they find protection in the grass from predators pretty interesting doesn't have anything to do with figs but since I'm on since I'm here on location I thought I'd talk about it a little bit here's a little J.H. Uh, Adriatic that's doing quite nicely that I planted as a little baby last year and it's making some fruit I mentioned in a previous video that <laughs> it had one fruit last year and I was going to share it with a friend and the raccoons came and took it in the night uh, so it goes occasionally I don't mind sharing uh, as long as they behave themselves and sometimes the birds they just get a little bit too greedy <laughs> you know and uh, so we use these protective measures to ensure that we get to in participate in some of the joys of fruit growing figs particularly good day